Welcome to Fireside. Appreciate uh, having everybody here tonight. We've got a uh, pretty fair turnout, who includes Shentumney District herself. We appreciate that. And whomever the um, uh, the character is in the other corner there with all the uh, symbols, that's uh, we'll have to interpret that as we go through uh, go through time. So welcome to uh, Tuesday night's Fireside Chat. And uh, let's go, Scott, take it away. Okay, um, I will tell you, I was asked the other, well, first of all, I'll start off with the fact that um, I went up a week and a half ago to Hoodoo, and we were able to have our section con play up at Hoodoo. Um, and we'll, I, I, I believe the attendance was over 300. Um, they did a, a majority of it outside um, and should have been masked inside except while eating. Um, I can't guarantee that I saw that the whole time I was there, but uh, um, that was what they were supposed to be doing. But a great event, and I haven't heard of any, you know, um, backlash as far as any COVID situations afterwards, and we're a week and a half out from that. So... Uh, uh, we'll also mention just a, what I feel. I, I just did our national camp assessment program intent to operate today. And as a part of that, we turned in our, our camping numbers from this last year. We actually had in our camps, Balakwa and Baker, we actually had more scouts from outside of our council than we'd had from inside our council attend our camps. Um, which I found kind of interesting. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm very pleased that we've got interest from all over the area um, and hopeful that the, the units within our council um, just at least have us in a rotation that will um, we'll be uh, utilizing one of our camp properties and our camp programs in the future. Um, We'll also mention Ed Singer's on. I wanted to say thank you. Ed has been coming in and volunteering in the scout office and scout store and really appreciate Ed stepping up and doing that. Ed, thank you very much. We, we greatly thank appreciate you. what you're doing. Our, our challenge is trying to keep them busy. So <laughs> we'll try to do that, Ed. Um, uh, summer camp, as, as uh, I was saying, I turned those numbers in. At the same time, I'm only aware of one situation, and that was a, about a half a week after they were at camp, we got a report of one of our um, adult leaders that had been at summer camp that came down and tested positive to COVID. And uh, so we shared that information. We told them to share it with their unit, and um, we shared that information with our staff and did not hear of any other cases that came about from that. So we don't know when they actually, you know, were exposed to, to COVID, but thankfully because the way we ran camps in our cohort groups, there was very limited exposure. And to our knowledge, nothing else was spread from, from that one particular case. And that's the only one we heard about this summer. So I, as far as I'm concerned, a great summer um, of camping. And it's, it was just nice to go visit our camps and see scouting happening after last year. Um, you know, it, it's great to see ha scouting happening, but when you got to look, sit there and look at a screen like we're doing tonight to see it happening, um, it's not quite as fun as when you're out there and in uh, the wilds um, taking advantage of what we've got at our, our facilities. Uh, the other thing, um, I wish I could give you an update. Um, like I, I said, I, I had somebody that expressed interest um, in knowing with the Order of the Arrow if there were any limitations um, for our far, fall fellowship. To my knowledge, I can't read. I can't find anything that limits the numbers. Um, what I do know is that it's masking indoors unless you're eating and masking outdoors when social distancing is um, not, not doable or, or not available. So um, 
that being said, I, again, I cannot find any limitations to numbers. And I'm guessing since they've got, you know, full football stadiums in, in Corvallis and Eugene, that there probably are not limitations to those numbers. So um, we'll mention that. And then Jim, I'd really like to turn some time over to you to talk about kind of what's happening in our, in our properties, if you don't mind. Please, Jim. Sure, Scott. <laughs> um, yeah, um, there's there's still stuff going on at the different camps. Camp Baker, we've actually, uh, this coming weekend, they will have all of the roof framed and probably sheeted and ready for roofing on the new shower house at Camp Baker. Yeah, which is really cool. That's going to be 10 individual shower rooms. One will be ADA uh specific, but all of them are actually ADA accessible. Um, and then we'll have three more bathrooms, one of those, and those will just be toilet and wash sink so that it's get in, get out, don't take a shower in there. Uh, so, so that's going well. There's a service group going up to uh, Camp Malacqua to do a little bit more work uh, to help prepare it for next year. And uh, we've got summer dates for next year too that you know, for Camp Malacqua and NYLT too, that should be put on the uh, the council website soon, I hope. Um, but th that's kind of what's going on. There's another group that's gonna be going up to the Kits and Hot Spring Camp and taking measurements and making a materials list so that the program shelter can be replaced there. We've got some funding for that. And, uh, so there's, there's lots going on. It's, it's the best camping weather for me because all the kids are back in school. <laughs> but that's, that's my short report. I, I will mention that um, uh, looking at chat that Jim had a question on there, what percentage of our, of our Scouts BSA units attended um, a long-term camp this summer? I don't have all the reports back from our units that went outside of council. Um, but from what uh, Rob and I were looking at this morning um, or earlier today, I think 32, we figured at least 32 of the 53 Scouts BSA troops that we have attended some kind of long-term um, uh, long camp this summer. Now, Jim, I would leave that to, uh, for, to you to figure out the percentage, but uh, knowing how long it might take, I'll just go ahead and let you know that's 60%. So... Okay. I, would hope it's, I would hope it's higher than that. I mean, do we have troops that are not doing summer camp? We probably have some that are not doing summer camp, but that's an indication of how strong they are as well. So I was going to say, yeah, if you're not doing summer camp, you're not much of a troop. Yeah. And you need some serious help. That's yeah, Green, Greenwood, like if that. Scott would reread my question, it was what percentage of OTC units camp camped in, in our, our camps? camps is? Yes, not, not everywhere. Because, you know, the, the, the number of scouts is, is important, but it's also important, like Danita saying, that we get a high percentage of our troops getting outside, going to summer camp. Yeah, and to, to the best... But what's that percentage, Scott? 43%, Jim. <laughs> you just made that up. No, I know. It, it, it's trying to go from memory, but I think there was 23 of our units that attended either Baker or Malacqua. So that of 20, 22 or three of 53 is somewhere around 40 to 45%. So. Perfect. Yep. We want them to go to, to other camps also to experience horses and yeah, all sorts yeah. of things. You know? And one of the things um, to me, I, the reason I, I really enjoy hearing about units from outside of our council that are coming to our camps is they go back and they talk about their experience. And I, I just heard glowing reports from both Baker and Malacqua of the units that are attended Baker and Malacqua. And I mean, had the opportunity to chauffeur around one of the units from California area that just, you know, just kept going on and on about what a great time they had. And, and you know that they're gonna go back to the air, their area and talk about the experience they had. So that just means hopefully that we get more units from outside of our area that have an interest and will join us in future years. And, and we, we talked about this before, 
But um, one of the things that I, I, I think we need to improve upon is letting people experience those units that come from outside of our area, experience the Oregon coast. Because they come out and a lot of times they go directly to camp and then from camp, they turn around and go home. And they, other than going across to the dunes and getting a chance to go um, sandboarding, they don't really get to experience the Oregon coast. And so we're looking at how we can change our program a little bit to give them a better opportunity to experience what's out there. So hopefully you'll see some changes related to that um, to, to really let people experience what the Oregon coast is, especially during the summer, you know. <laughs> you go in November or February, you may not want to experience the Oregon coast, but. <laughs> Do we have any sort of a marketing plan to promote our camps to outside areas? Um, where, you know, that's, it's always kind of a challenge, Danita. Um, what one of the things we do, what we're working on is getting the information ready for the following year much earlier so that we can send that out. And we have units, you know, from the last three or four years that we can contact, ask them to share that. I, in the past and previous councils that I've worked at, it's, it's really kind of tough because for the most part, I'm not going to be able, hold on, Randy, I'll get back to you in a sec. Um, I, Councils are so interested in filling their own camps. A lot of times it's a challenge to get them to help promote your camp. Now, where that's different is where we've got councils that don't have their own summer camp. So my, Maybe there's a lot more, unfortunately, this year that are in that position. I, I know of two in our area. Um, I don't th believe Pacific Harbors Council is has a camp, as a, a Scouts BSA camp at, at this time. And I know Blue Mountain Council does not as well. So they've given us the opportunity to promote within those councils and we'll work with them to make sure we do that. Um, the other part of it is I, you know, I, it, it costs and I put some advertising in um, Scouting Magazine in the past. And, and that's- I don't think we need to do things that cost. I think we have so many opportunities with social media and things that are totally free that we just need to promote to those other councils. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, you know, one of the best things if we share it, share, share the page, but uh, you know, I, I was looking, we just got, and I didn't mention this, but we, Tony Renicky has been working with the MJ Murdoch Foundation and we've received a $300,000 grant to do some additional projects out at Camp Baker. Um, and that will help us get our um, new health lodge done. Um, it will help us with some other projects out there as well, new uh, staff shower house and some underground wiring that we need to do instead of having it up above the ground. So, um, but, but as a part of that, they're, they're going to talk about their donation, their grant to us, and we have the opportunity to publicize through them. And I went back to our Facebook page and they said, they just want scouting pictures. So I went back to our Facebook page and just started looking at pictures and saved them to send them to them. And it's not necessarily pictures of what the project is, it's just pictures of scouting in action, so. Yeah. Scott, what I might suggest that um, you could send the We Are NST1 video that came out of our council as a demonstration of all the activities going on. I yeah. mean, some of that was outside our geographical area, but fits the bill. They don't have to read it. They don't have to look at it. They can just watch it. Yeah. And well, we'll somebody's making a video from Camp Baker, right? We have a scout that's making a video about Camp Baker. I think Tony's working on that, yeah. Yeah. And and um, now I forgot what I was going to say. Never mind. <laughs> you know, I, I can't hear just... Jim. Jim's talking. Oh. Can anybody hear Jim? Can't hear you, Jim. Still can't.
hand and arm signals, Jim. <laughs> you can there put sign yeah. language. Yeah. Okay. Just my my question that I raised my hand about a bit ago is in terms of enhancing the uh, the program so that out of out of council units can experience the Oregon coast while they're at Camp Baker. Who is who is going to bring those ideas together? Or if this group here has ideas about those things, who do we feed those ideas to? I, I get them to me, and I'll be working soon with our camping committee, and uh, we'll we'll be working on our marketing plan to get that information out there. So um, yeah, get them to me, and I'll I'll take it to our camping committee and and make sure that that those ideas get get heard. So. Thank you. We'll, uh, so can you hear me now, Scott? Yeah. Okay. A couple of things that were, were not added was we will have internet service going in with our underground power at Camp Baker, which will make it really nice for the work from home people. It will be a very secure system that scouts won't be able to watch whatever movies they want or that. There will be different, different levels of security. If a person needs to work from home, they can go out there and have full access. Um, the other thing that Scott did that I really uh, thought was wise, I'll say that, um, those councils that don't have their own summer camps, he's allowing them to come stay at our camp, summer camps, at in-council prices. And I think, you know, that's as part really of the nice. scouting movement, that's a wonderful thing to do. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's move ahead ever so slightly, if you don't mind, if that's uh, agreeable to the group. Uh, our council commissioner has joined us. Uh, she had a couple of words to say to us, and then uh, McKay, Anita, if you've got a couple of words for us. Go ahead. Nothing too exciting. Um, I talked to, oh, sorry. Did you want Claude at first? Yeah, one, two, three, you know. Oh, good. Claude, uh -huh. Okay. okay. Thank you, Randy. Um, if this was Sesame Street, I'd say that this uh, month is brought to you by the letter R, because you should be seeing a whole lot more of your your district and, and unit commissioners this month, because we're going to be pursuing recruitment, registration, and the foundation for rechartering. And with respect to recruitment, we not only will we be supporting the membership efforts, but we're going to focus on making sure that units are ready to take on new members by making sure that they have assistance that's needed to identify leaders, create a budget and prepare a calendar. Um, with registration, we want to make sure that when Danita and her group are successful and bring in new recruits, that they actually get officially connected by uh, completing registration. And if they make that connection through the filing of their registration, they will be getting all sorts of communications, not only from Oregon Trail Council, but beyond. So I think that will promote the accessibility of information. And finally, we are going to um, start working on recharter, which ties in with what we're talking about with registration. And I am very, very pleased to announce that Chantimony District will have a new unit commissioner, Rose Brown, that sometime this fall will be joining her. And um, I also want to congratulate McKay and that his efforts with Roundtable have managed to start bringing in the den leaders that we so highly covet. So that's that's what's going on in the Commissioner Corps this month. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. McKay? Well, that being said, I mean, I'm going to overlap with, uh, with Claudette here a lot. We had a very successful roundtable uh, this last month. Uh, our committee member breakout was really good. We talked about the new recharter program that is coming out. Um, keep an eye out on it. It's supposed to be available on uh, October 15th. So we're only a, a few weeks away from being able to see that live. I haven't heard of any uh, changes to that as of yet. So uh, October 15th for the new recharter. Um, we had great... Uh, great breakouts with our scoutmasters and our cubs. Um, looking forward to our next round table, which is not in the month of October. 
Uh, October is three times a year. We like to let the districts have their own meetings and October is one of those months. So look forward to messages from your individual areas, uh, service districts or your districts uh, for what they are going to be doing uh, for the uh, October roundtable, uh, whether it be in person or whether it be uh, via Zoom. Uh, that's entirely up to the districts. Just keep an eye out for that. Our next roundtable as a council will be in the month of November. Looking forward to that one where our Cubs will be talking about uh, loyal uh, our Weeblows will be going over game design. Our, uh, the, the Scouts will be talking about winter camping. And in the committee breakout, we're going to be talking about uh, the importance of having a pack trainer or a troop trainer and what they do for our units. So keep an eye out for that coming up in November. Hey, McKay, do you want to take a minute to talk about an additional... Um... Um, hat that you've been asked to wear? I would love to. And um, it, it's, it's not quite official yet. We need to get the paperwork in, but I invite everybody to start looking in your units for people to be registering for Wood Badge in 2022. Uh, I've been asked to be the course director for our Wood Badge. Uh, we're doing it as a cluster course, so we're going to be working a lot more closely with Crater Lake Council uh, and really having a combined course. Uh, it's going to be different than what we've done before. Uh, we're making a few changes, one of them being the time of year. It's going to be held in the fall. So uh, our, our tentative dates right now are, uh, let me just make sure I get this right so I don't, uh, don't make a fool of myself later. Um, it is going to be September, let's see here, 2022, September, September 16th or uh, yeah, 16th through 18th, and then October 8th and 9th um, for our Wood Badge course of uh, 2022. And, Thanks, and, and Kelly, I just want to let you know that we are an equal opportunity volunteer organization. We poach from all districts, just so you know, okay? Yeah. Those people at council, I swear, those people at council. I know, yeah. they're always after me. Yeah, yeah, no no kidding, no doubt. Thanks, McKay, congratulations, that's good news. Very, very Thank nice. you, sir. Danita, a few minutes, please. Um, I would just say that what I'm seeing is the units that are doing any sort of joining event um, are having really good success. So if they get the word out, they're using social media, they're inviting people, uh, all sorts of families are signing up and joining. So it's sort of a, if you build it, they will come. Um, the packs that are not are shriveling up, unfortunately. So uh, it's really worthwhile to get people out there. Families are ready to join. We just have to reach them. So. Yep, very positive. Very, very positive. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm seeing that happen here and there across the council. And uh, it's the, uh, the new kids are coming in in, in uh, little driblets at this point. But uh, we do know that it works. We get the word out. Peer-to-peer -peer recruiting, families, dividing families. All of those things work, uh, work very, very nicely. Um, for the general good, there's a national webinar on the new recharter system. It's on the 28th of September. And uh, if you have a chance to uh, attend that, it's free. Registration's on Facebook. We'll send it out again in, uh, in Trail Smoke, uh, but that'll help us all uh, help the units that uh, we're all associated with. A couple of quick shout outs. Anita Thompson, thank you for joining us now that we know who you are. Appreciate that. But uh, Anita had some Gaelic symbols on there or something. I, I forget, yeah, pretty good. Craig Yilkham. Glad to have you here. We've talked about you in terms of PAC 334 again. If you have some curiosities, we can chat about that. John Weimer, good to see you. It's been a long time. Tim Miller, we've never seen you on. Would you like to introduce yourself and uh, take your two minutes of fame? 
<laughs> I'm Tim Miller. He has three minutes of fame. How's that? I'm Tim Miller Morgan. I'm just I'm the committee chair for Troop 30 and Troop 4030. So this is the first time I've actually it's worked out of my schedule to attend. So it's been really interesting. Thank you. What town are you in, Tim? I'm in Toledo. Thank you. Right, if, you if you wonder where Toledo is, what is it? 20 miles uh, west of Burnt Woods, is that correct? <laughs> Five miles. Come on, Sherry. Come on, Sherry, laugh about that. <laughs> oh, I always say it's an hour for, come from Corvallis, but uh, five days from Corvallis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. 17 come miles. Out, south, depending uh, on which way you're going. So that's, uh, I don't know. Go ahead, Scott. I was just going to mention that um, following up on Anita's report, um, I got an interesting e email. Sandy and I got an interesting email last night from one of our life scouts. And he was talking about um, his feeling that we need to get back into the schools. And I, I got with him and I said, I so much agree with you. We weren't able to do that last year. But he talked about the friendships that he developed in scouting and how he remembers when he was in Cub Scouts um, the, the visibility of scouting in the schools. And I said, I, I agree completely. And we're, we're pushing our units to make sure that they're getting into the schools and developing that relationship because that's where it all happens. And, and then it's ask, having not only getting in front of people and making sure they're asked, but also having the right people ask families to join scouting. So the other thing I will mention real quick, Randy, and I know I'm taking up a lot of the time on this, but the board just approved last Wednesday um, a new youth protection policy and just wanted to mention that. If we are sending out emails notifying people that their, their youth protection is expiring and if it doesn't get updated by the time it expires, they will be uh, their membership will be expired and they will have to reapply, um, you know, fill out the application form and reapply for membership. So we're getting a lot stricter, but we as a council, as we get through the banks up, bankruptcy and move forward, we need to be able to tell people that we're at 100% or as close to 100% as we could be. This should enable us to get to 100% of our leaders being youth protection trained. Yep, that's absolutely critical. We just got a, we're getting our slate clean, as it were. We're, uh, we're about to have, from a national standpoint, get the bankruptcy uh, cleared, uh, get the uh, uh, folks taken care of that uh, were uh, part of uh, ugly, ugly business uh, years ago. Get that resolved, get it behind us, get back to scouting. Uh, things are starting to look up. Uh, recruiting is starting to work. Camps are working. Uh, you, yeah, it's just an exciting time. One more thing, Scott, and then we got to run. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I, we did send an email out about the impact that all of this has on Oregon Trail Council. Just kind of a show of hands. Did everybody receive that that email? Excellent. Okay. All right. Anything else for the good of the order? Greg Yoakum, you got two minutes. Ms. Shintimini, Jerry, no? I'm sorry, I was reading the note about how we went from 88% to 90, whatever it was. I, I was rejoicing. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Chintimini, yeah, what we have coming up is Haunted Trails out at Camp Baker, uh, October 29th through 31st. Um, encourage your, your packs to uh, go to that and bring a friend. Um, it'll be open to the public for the Saturday. We won't have the non-registered um, scout families spending the night, but they're welcome to join us. All the activities are going to be on Saturday. Very good stuff. Very good stuff. All righty. Well, we promised that we'd uh, we'd start on time and finish on time, and by golly, it is 7 o'clock. So those of you who want to hang around and uh, uh, do the non-official um, uh, uh, chat, you're more than welcome to stay. For a few minutes, anyway. Other than that, we will uh, we'll see you another time uh, next month at the next fireside chat. Thanks a bunch. <laughs>